have on Scott Schreiner of Weezer. Hello. For me, not only does this mean a lot because you're part of Weezer, but well, we're both from the 419 area code area, is which is Toledo, Ohio. Area. We yep. were born in the same hospital, we found out. So yep. this is going to be a great interview, I think. So how was tour in the United Kingdom and over the pond that you just yeah, finished really a great. week ago? Uh, Smashing Pumpkins were really uh, interesting characters. And I got to hang out with a couple of them, uh, James and Jack. And they were super nice. And uh, we had dinner with Billy, had like a band night out. And that was cool. They sounded fantastic. Uh crowd was super into him it, was, it seemed like a you know a bit more of a smashing pumpkins crowd than a weezer crowd but i guess that kind of left us with the challenge of like how do we win over a bunch of people that may be on the fence about us but i, I think we did really well we had a really strong set list and uh i think it went well for sure i mean i looked at the photos absolutely beautiful time you had so yeah, and thanks. the u.s tour so many dates are all are already sold out of course you guys are yeah. adding some more so that's in two months yeah. so how are you enjoying the downtime or i shouldn't really say downtime but downtime from the tour at the moment yeah i i would like to just keep working that'd be great so i just i keep myself busy at home you know you know i got a couple of kids and uh like a bunch of dogs and a bunch of interests and hobbies so but you know I, I love working that's my favorite thing to do but i'll uh it'll be it'll be nice to be home for my birthday this year we got the fourth of july fireworks this weekend this should be fun no doubt about it yeah. and take me real quick um how did you get involved in music of course toledo the midwest is a great place However, though, it is not Los Angeles. It is not New York City. It is 10 times harder if you're a kid from Toledo than New York City to make it in music, no doubt. Yeah. So take us just through for you how you got interested in music. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Toledo's a good place to start. There's a lot of great musicians, and the schools were really supportive of music at that time. I started on trumpet in grade school. Uh, my dad's a jazz saxophone player, and he played in a couple bands, so there was always these weirdo jazz musicians over at our house and i just thought they were super cool and funny really smart and they're all really talented and i just loved music i just kind of inherited that from my parents i guess so uh i didn't like the same kind of music he did but uh yeah i was playing trumpet and i was getting ready to go into high school and i think i heard a black sabbath record and i was looking at the trumpet and nothing wrong with trumpet but i was like if i carry this trumpet to school every day i'm really going to get my ass beat so I better find like a little bit more of a, a substantial instrument, <laughs> right? I wound up uh, kind of choosing bass. Which is ironic because Rivers, of course, was kind of like that in high school. So it's, <laughs> it's ironic about that. Um, yeah. For you, though, of course, what what was it kind of like that first time you put that instrument in your hand? I can remember yeah. for me briefly when I did a recorder, the teacher literally said you should do choir in middle school. You're feeling uh, like really? a cross bun. So I'm sure for you, that's now is not the same approach, but what was it like for you that first instrument you put in your hands? You mean the trumpet? Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, what was it like for me? Man, I was little, like fourth, fifth grade. So I couldn't even tell you what it was like. It was my grandfather's trumpet which is probably like from the 20s or something <laughs> uh yeah i don't know it was cool i like attention i like making noise so i think i enjoyed that part of it even though it was terrible but i actually got kind of decent on it and kind of learned how to practice you know what i mean and learned how to how to read a little bit from that and it just kind of I, I could really tell like if you put the time into it every day i could hear myself getting better so I think that now that I think of it, maybe the first time I ever thought of it, that kind of started me on my path. Like, okay, when I got my first bass, I was just like, oh my God, the smell, the look of it, this thing's amazing and couldn't make it make any sense, right? And started taking lessons right away. But I was, I knew that if I kept doing it and just being okay with sucking for a little while, that it would start to get better. Which is how a lot of things start, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. And and to think that you started on the trumpet to where you're at now, um, yeah. really inspiring. Thanks. What would you say is something that, of course, growing up, I read you are a big Elton John fan, Black yeah. Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I did the research on that. Yeah, you For did. you, how did that kind of transition into the alternative rock type of way? Well, of course, you served in the Marines. So how did you, that yeah. kind of when you got to California, change into 
alternative. Yeah, it started before that because uh, so I was into all these rock bands, and then uh, I got into a Motown R and B band, and then I got in this college band, Love by Millions. We just did a reunion gig, and they were playing a lot of kind of obscure alternative type music. And yeah, I really liked it. You know, I started getting into kind of, I guess I was more of a new wave guy. Like I never was into punk rock that much, but I was into synthesizers and new wave. And, uh, but then a friend of mine said, oh yeah, the Chili Peppers and Fishbone are playing in Ann Arbor. You should go see them. And I was like, oh, all right, whatever. I don't know what this is. And, uh, but I went and saw them and those shows, this was in uh, probably 88, I guess. And uh, it was with their original Chili Pe well, uh, you know, the Jack Irons, uh, Hillel, Chili Peppers lineup. And uh, my mind was just blown, you know. And then Fishbone came out, just crushed it. They were so weird. They seemed like they were having so much fun on stage. The mu they were really good musicians, but the music was really wacky. You know what I mean? So it kind of started there. And then I think I, w I saw Primus, and then it was just over. And then I, then I got all messed up in this kind of, funk metal, new metal kind of thing for a while with Faith No More and Primus and bands like that. So, uh, yeah, I will always be like a hard rock kind of metal guy at heart, but I definitely got off into some kind of new metal as well. And, uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and and the pictures you too. Are. It's funny because me and Rivers read a lot of the same shows. Like, we, we both read these Pixie shows and at this Jane's Addiction show in Hollywood and 90 i guess like at the palladium but i didn't meet them i didn't never saw them until i went to see them at club lingerie which was a little bit later like 93 or two or something wow yeah um of course something that i think is just really interesting about weezer of course is how you guys are just all different um from yeah. rivers to you um to brian and the other members yeah just pat is the only other member yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes touring members, but on the official side, of course. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite concert venue? Um, which I guess we'll just say maybe outside of America since that tour is over for now. And if somebody does hear, yeah. they're not going to be offended. Yeah, that's true. There's a few spots in the, in the U S that I always get excited about. I love playing at Madison square garden. We get to play there this fall. It's sold out. Yeah. So that's great. Um, and as far as overseas, yeah, we I have fun playing in London and and there's a there's some great fans over there too. I think probably Japan when we get to do these club shows in Japan. Like I love being in Tokyo and Osaka. It's just the <laughs> kind of opposite of LA and and it's like just really like going to the other side of the world. So, yeah, Japan is one of the things I get the most excited about. Wow. Well, it's yeah. a great country. So, uh yeah. <laughs> good food as well. Yeah. For you, what would you say has it been like being in Weezer for yourself, you know, on that stage, being a member, getting to travel? Everyone has a different experience. Um, yeah. I've interviewed a couple of different musicians at this point now. So everyone has a different experience. For you, just what has it been like? The most memorable thing? Yeah, I I, I mean, I came from like really struggling musician in Hollywood the 10 years I was in L.A. before I got in Weezer. So to go from that to like, starting like a major tour on the it was like their second half of the green album tour i guess and just to jump into these like i think it was called united center in chicago like where the bulls play and to be in these massive arenas and see all the people and all the staging and lights and i i still get really moved by the experience after whatever it's been 22 years or 23 years i still get really excited about it i there's nothing i'd rather do than these shows, I just have a blast. And it's it's always blown my mind. I'll never take it for granted, I'll tell you that much. Wow. Yeah. And a couple other things. Um, for you, of course, what has kind of been your favorite, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. pre-song before you joined the band? And Priest? then set, yeah, no, no, um, not Judas Priest, the a song before you joined Weezer, and then yeah. since you've been with Weezer, of course. Uh, well, like I mean, I told the story a couple of times, but I didn't really get Weezer until I heard Sadie. So I thought it was kind of a jokey band, like, but you know, like undone seemed like kind of a joke, you know what I mean? Like a shticky thing. <laughs> and then I heard Buddy Holly and I was like, eh, cool, heavy. All right. But it's still a little bit like jokey. You know what I mean? 
And then, uh, I, but I heard Saint Ain't So, and then I was just, just like in with Weezer, like that was my jam, right? And then, you know, whatever a year, year and a half later, when I when I heard uh, El Scorcho on the radio, I was just like, what the f are these guys doing? Like, it <laughs> sounds so insane. Nothing on the radio sounded like that, and uh, I didn't really give it much of a chance. I guess I did. It's not like I didn't like it, but it just didn't resonate with me as much. And unfortunately, I missed out on the experience of of uh, that album at that time. And I guess when Hash Pipe came out, I was just like, all right, this is, I can get behind this now, you know? And it wasn't that long after that I got a call from Weezer, from Rivers, from Weezer. Uh, so, but now what is my, some of my favorite stuff? I still have a blast playing the Pinkerton stuff. It's really fun and wild. Uh, but there's a couple of Red Album songs that I really like doing. I'll always like doing Greatest Man. And then we're doing something off Ebate lately, uh, uh, anonymous yeah so anonymous is like really challenging every night and i think a lot of people are just like what are you guys doing like it's a little bit of a head scratcher but we have so much fun playing it you know and there's this part where me and rivers do the same riff and i look over at him and he's just like and we're doing that riff together it's just so wild and fun so that's one of my favorites right now wow that's, I would have guessed something else. And I listened to some of your interviews prior to this. So I wouldn't ask the same questions. Right. One other question while we're on the topic of band before I was like to close with advice that people have, but before we get to that, does people have some advice for me? <laughs> no advice that you have for people. Oh, I could use yeah. some advice too. <laughs> um, come to pretty university. I'm sure everyone would love to okay. uh, see at least remember there. <laughs> um, cool. What is something that you try to tell yourself before every show, if you don't mind me asking. Kind of when I interviewed yeah. Kurt Warner, I was like, "What did you tell yourself before a Super Bowl?" Or what did he tell himself? Game? Um, he said same thing as in practice. Okay. For you, what is it? For same me, thing as in- it, it's it's to stay out of my thoughts. You know, it's just to to center myself in the moment, not be thinking, because that's what gets that's what messes me up. Right. If I can just not think, just be in the moment and and not always like connect with everybody in the room, but just kind of connect with the guys in the band, see who's up in the front, who's doing what, walk around. You know, what I mean, I kind of stake my uh, claim on <laughs> in this area of stage, you know what I mean, and walk around a little bit and just try to make uh, eye contact with people. But it, I feel good. It's not like I have to like prop myself up or anything. I think I just. If I'm distracted and not in the moment, A, I don't remember it, and B, I don't, I don't do that well. So it's like stay out of thinking, be in the moment. Solid. Yeah. And then kind of my last thing, of course, is you know, you do shows, of course, and this one's kind of different because you got a 19-year-old, you don't have a 40-year-old journalist, you know, or a 60-year-old journalist, or even a 30-year-old journalist who's a millennial. So you got yeah. me, Gen Z. Yeah. Um Gen Z generation, you've heard a lot about. You're, of course, raising kids a little bit younger. Yeah. So what advice would you kind of have for my generation in music or entertainment yeah. I think, as a whole? Entertainment is a kind of more broad one, I would say. But Yeah, I, think- I mean, it really helps if you love what you've chosen to do. That's great. But not only that, I would strongly recommend being excellent at it. Like, be so good. It's kind of thing Steve Martin, the comedian, said it. It's like, be so good they can't say no to you. You know? I spent so many hours practicing and learning, right? And I spent a lot of time, like, taking care of myself physically and mentally so so that I can <laughs> interact with other humans and be decent, you know? I mean, maybe that's easy for some people, but for me, like, being a little bit of a outsider or whatever, it took a little bit of effort. But, uh... When I first met the Weezer guys, I did not look like I should have been there, you know, and I didn't try to put on different clothes so that I would fit in. I just went in as myself. Right. And but I think that I was good enough that it was just undeniable, you know, and I wasn't born good enough. Like you heard me the first time I picked up a bass, I couldn't make any sense out of what to do at all. Right. But that's the amount of of time and energy I put into that instrument you know i think younger people like are a little bit more like proficient in other things like it seems like a lot of young people can play guitar can play bass play some drums program keyboards and drums you know what i mean 
I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not that way, but like, I just was like, I'm a bass player. I walked around with the bass on half the day. That's, that was what I lived and breathed, you know? But like I said, by the time I got my shot and met the Weezer guys, like I was good enough that they didn't need to look for anybody else. That's what you gotta be solid like that. And one solid. last, one last little question I'd like to end with is, and I kind of hate asking this question, but everybody I interview, no matter it's been a former vice president of the United States of America, which is clearly like top of the food chain in some aspects, yeah. um, or a beginning band, is there a band that you know you would be starstruck to see or that you have been starstruck to see? Of course, you mentioned Elton John, Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Is there one for you out there or somebody? That's still playing? Yeah. My dogs are coming in. I don't know. I couldn't act right around Trent Reznor. I really tried. Like I met him and I just couldn't be normal. Wow. I was just like, oh, dude, what the, the, the. like I couldn't get a normal <laughs> sentence out. So I was a little starstruck by Trent. Uh, if I ever met, you know, if I got to meet David Bowie before he died, I think I'd be falling over myself too. You or know? Elton John. Or Elton John. He's kind of reached out to Rivers a couple times. I feel for some reason like, not that he's not on the level because I think he's above those guys, but um, I don't know. I think I'd feel comfortable around him. I think like Jimmy Page would be, I'd feel pretty uh, awkward around. So yeah, there, there, there's still a few guys. Well, if Elton comes on the show, which again, there's no, I want to be clear. There's no plans for that to happen. Yeah. I will, I'll have to give you a call and you can co-host. Yeah. Him. Give me a call. He's just a, he's a beautiful human being, man. It just like so much positivity. And that's like something that I, I'm trying to go for, you know what I mean? It just, I don't know. I just get, I think he's putting a lot of good energy out in the world and uh, it's really important. And I, I think that's another thing. Like when I got into music, I'm like, you know, I, I'm not like, I'm not religious, but I, I believe that there's a, some kind of power, you know, out there. And I was just like, I can do this. If you can align it so that I can do what I'm good at and that I could make a living and support myself and possibly support a family, I'll continue to be a service to you and and to try to bring some good energy out there. So that that's that's really my mission in life. Well, that's that's really awesome and sweet of you and a good thing yeah, cool. to keep on your mind every day. Well, sure. Scott, I appreciate yeah. you coming on so much. Anything else you want to say for younger people? And one last thing, can you say boiler up, hammer down? It's just the Purdue thing. Broiler up, hammer down, it's just the Purdue thing. Yep. <laughs> you <laughs> Anything said else, so just just don't give up. You know, I mean, it's like, it, it it's hard to keep going. It took me 10 years. I almost had to move back to Toledo like 50 times, uh, but I just kept scratching and clawing and would not give up, you know, and I just kept working on my craft. So don't give up. Wow. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah, on. All right. Thanks for being patient with me with the time and stuff. And always good to meet a fellow Toledo. And no problem.